Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Power Automate Cloud child flows versus the desktop subflows. So first, we'll understand what these two are and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the differences. Because here's why you might be a user of either one of them and it's important to you know what the differences are so that you know when to use which one. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So first, let's understand what this child flows and subflows is all about. So like I'm showing you over here, the child flow concept is specifically for the cloud, while the subflows is for the desktop. Now, both of them are part of the overall power automation, which is part of the power platform. But the child flows like you see on the left, those are for the cloud ones. So in this example, I've actually shown you two actions. One of them is to go ahead and run specifically a child flow. And so is the next one as well. You can go ahead and run a child flow. Now on the right side, you see the desktop subflows. And this is for the robotic process automation, things that run on your local desktop. And that is what it's called as the subflows. So they are part of the overall power automation system, but two different things. So yes, they have some similarities and they've got some differences too. But before we look at the differences, I just want to understand when would I use a child flow or when would I use a subflow? So let's start by looking at a child flow. One of the first things to consider is in your existing Power Automate cloud flow, if you've got more than 500 actions in your current flow, then for any other subsequent actions, you may want to go and consider using a child flow or at least send those actions to a child flow. The other thing is how many level deep are your actions nested? Because nested, nested means you have actions inside and actions inside and actions. That's the concept of nesting. And if you're already eight levels deep, then you really want to consider using a child flow uh, so that you will not hinder the overall performance of your cloud flow. These are the two main reasons when you would even consider using a child flow. Similarly, on the subflow, which is for your robotic process automation on your desktop, it really helps to organize all your actions into a separate flow, especially those which are reusable. Also, you can help reduce reputation by allowing users to reuse that in a subflow. What that means is that if you've got a number of steps that are constantly being repeated again and again and again in your desktop flow, create that as a separate subflow and go ahead and call that in. That's one of the other advantages. Also, one of the biggest uses is to capture log errors. Because in your actions, there is a whole separate property for capturing logs. And what you can do is anytime an error occurs, you can log that error by triggering a subflow and then the subflow will go ahead and capture all the information and even store it in another location. So these are the three main use cases for using subflows. So now that I've given you a quick overview of why you would even consider using the two of them, what I want to focus on are the differences. So let's start with the first one. When it comes to the cloud flows, they are 100% solution based and independent. While the desktop flows, it is part of the main flow and they are not independent. So what does that mean? Well, let's go take a look. So I'm in the power automate cloud flow area. I'll go and select automated cloud flow. Sure, I'll go and say when an item is created for a SharePoint, I'll click on create. It goes and creates this trigger, but I'll ignore it for now because what I want to do is come over here run the action and I'm specifically going to go ahead and search for child flow. All right, right over here, I'm doing flows and I see desktop flows, but I don't see a child flow. Why? Because I'm not part of a solution. What I'm doing is going and building a classic flow style. I've not actually come inside a solution. So that's the first thing is it is 100% solution blade. These cloud child flows is 100% solution based. And just to prove that point, I'll come back over here into my solution. Um, in my solution, I'll go and click on plus new. I'll go and click on automation, cloud flow. Um, I'll do automated again, just to keep it consistent. Um, here, I'll also go and select the same thing as a SharePoint, click on create. We are right now inside the studio piece. Here, I'll go and click on plus new setup and I'll actually do a search for child flows, the similar search I did before, but now I can see run a child flow. 
Remember, this option was just not available over here. See, child flow, I could not see it. Even if I go and select this, see more, I just don't see it. So it doesn't show in the classic style, but if you do it in the solution-based one, that is where you're able to see it. So this is the first thing, it is 100% solution-based. The second thing was they are independent. So let me go back into my solution itself, all right? Let me go out over here. And in my solution, I've got two flows. One of them is to go ahead and get an image of a Lego part number, and the other one is to go ahead and get an HTTP call. So if I go and open up the first one, which is get an image of a Lego part number, that is a flow by itself. I'll go in here, it shows me all the properties. I can go and click on edit, and inside the, and inside the studio, you will see that this flow actually loads up. This is the first thing, right over there. See, it's got two run child flows. These child flows, they are actually this one over here, this HTTP call that I'm making. So if I go and select that, I can go and edit it. It first takes me directly into the flow itself, showing me all of it. So key thing is when it comes to these child flows for the cloud side, they are completely independent. I can go and access them. I can go and find it individually, and I can go and access them one at a time as well. This is for the cloud flow. As a reminder, the desktop one is completely different. For the desktop subflows, they are part of the main flow and they're not independent. Well, let me show you what that means as well. Let me go into my Power Automate desktop. And in my Power Automate desktop, I've actually opened up this desktop flow that I already have. By default, all the desktop flows have the main one. There is always the main flow. And in my main, I've got a sub flow called get data from UPS site. And you can always see all your subflows right over here. See on the top left, it says subflows. When I click on it, you see your main one because main one is also classified as a subflow. But then you see the other one, the get data from the UPS site. However, this subflow is not an independent desktop flow. And just to prove that point, you see the name over here, get underscore data from. If I go into my Power Automate desktop, and if I on the top right, it says search flow. If I do get data, from see i don't see any matches there's no match found why because that subflow is always bound inside that main flow it is not an independent one so you see that difference the cloud ones each of the child flows completely independent but the subflows and the desktop they are part of the overall main flow so this was the first main difference the second one has to do with the variables so for the desktop subflows even the subflows can go ahead and use the same variables However, for the cloud flows, they cannot. Now, just to be clear, I'm talking about the variables that are set inside the cloud flow. I am not talking about environment level variables, specifically just the one inside the flow. And I'll show you how that works as well. So I'm back in the desktop flow that I showed you earlier. And on the right, you can see I have all of these flow variables. Take a look at the two in the bottom. You see that var current item and that var replaced. Well, those are the two variables that I created. Now, in the main flow, you see right over here, action 21, this is where I've leveraged the var current item variable. However, if I go into my subflow right over here and say I go and actually do a message, you see this display message action, go grab that, go and drop it over here. If I just go and click on this variable on the bottom, you see these two variables. These are the exact same ones we saw in the main. These are the exact same ones we can see in the subflow as well. So you see here, the variables are usable across the multiple flows, but things are a little different on the cloud side. So let's jump in over there. So we're back in the cloud on the Power Automate site. We are inside the solution, and this is the first flow. This flow has a variable already created. It's called initialize, and the variable name is var lego part number, all right? But now if I go to the other flow, this other flow is actually calling that exact same one. See, HTTP call for lego part number, that's the one, HTTP call for Lego part number. I am actually calling that child flow over here. But in this flow, if I go and now do a search for a variable, all right, so I'm gonna go now do a set variable because technically the variable should already exist, right? So I'll just go and do a set variable. In my set variable, I'll search for the set variable action. And right over here, blank. You see, even though this variable was created in the other child flow, when I go and call that child flow, the variable doesn't come through, only the flow does. Now, yes, there are ways to work around that. In fact, you can go and use environment variables, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to do that one comparison. 
that in the desktop side, the subflows, yep, the variable moves around very easily. But on the cloud so but on the cloud side, it does not. That was the second comparison. Now for the third and the final one, there are some similarities because both of them have the option to move steps around if there are no dependency. However, there is also this one additional thing on the desktop side. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the cloud child flows. So we're back in the cloud flow over here to get the Lego part number and I've got two child flows. Now check this out. This first one, it goes ahead and runs the cloud flow, gets some information and then that information is actually used in the second flow. This is why I cannot take this one and drag it down over here because it shows that it's allowing me to, but the moment I drop it, it comes up with this message. It says, this action cannot be dragged below actions that depend on it. And this is what I was talking about that yes, you can go ahead and move child flows around as long as there is no dependency. And this is one of those scenarios. The second child flow is absolutely dependent on the previous one. And therefore I simply cannot take that one and drag it down over here. Now let's go and take a look at the desktop flow. So for my desktop flows, I've got two scenarios. Here is the first scenario that in the main one, I want to go ahead and run a subflow, but check this out. My subflow is completely independent. So if I were to go ahead and take this action and say, if I go and move it up over here, it just moves and I don't get any errors. Why? Because when I'm running the subflow, it is completely independent. It doesn't need any information. It just goes ahead and takes it. However, there's a second scenario. If I now jump switch over, I have got a main flow and I've got a subflow. Now, if I attempt to take this subflow, say even outside this for each loop and I select it and I drag and move it on the top, I immediately get these errors. Why? Because there is a dependency inside the for each, there is a current item and I need that. So I get these errors. So you see there's a similar situation in the desktop side as well. The only time you can move these subflows around is if there is no dependency. And in the first case, I was able to move it just fine. But in the second scenario, there is a dependency, so I get the errors. Now, there is one more other thing. There's also this tab order. The main one is always in the front, and then there is the sub ones. This does not get affected in any way, because when we went and tried to move the subflows around, you saw that I got an error. So say if I go and take this tab, and if I move it over here, I don't get any errors whatsoever. So moving this tab around is completely independent. It doesn't affect any of the actions. However, if you move the actions, that's where the problem is. So this is the similarity between the cloud and the desktop flows as well. Now, one thing I have to point out is that the desktop also has the option to go and run other desktop flows, similar to what we saw on the cloud side. However, that was not the agenda of this video. Over here, I was specifically focusing on all the subflows. So hopefully this video gave you a few ideas. You picked up a few nuggets from this video and that just helps you your overall performance on the cloud side. And as always, keep using Power Automate cloud and desktop flows. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.